Welcome. I don't consider myself an especially stylish man on the whole, but do you dig my new necklace? In this video, of course, I'm reviewing the Hollyland Lark M2. It's a tiny wireless wearable lav mic from a company that's making some crazy innovative strides. With this different take on lav mic design, I had questions. Most importantly, does it sound good? How does it compare to the market leading lav systems? It's also got some lofty specs on paper and do they translate to the real world? Let's find out. Before we jump in, I need to ask a favor. I'm on the long and winding path to 100,000 subs. So every subscriber honestly means the world to me and it would make my day if you could just do that. It would cost you nothing and um, I appreciate it. Thank you in advance. And of course, I've also timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bit you want. This video is also unsponsored, but is made possible by my Patreon backers. Any funds from Patreon go back into the channel. I buy gear and then I give the gear to my backers. Like this Lark M2, which is worth 150 pounds, which in this case, Harleyland sent me on the condition that, you know, I can say what I like and I get to give it away to one of you guys. So if that's of interest, get down below all the details there and let's press on. Obviously for this video, you are hearing the Lark M2 throughout, but for reference, this is what my main microphone sounds like. It's of course the Warm Audio WA47. I love it. I reviewed it recently. Definitely check it out if you like the sound of this. And obviously, you know, I'm hiding the mic. It's there and um, I did a video about how I do that as well. So do check it out. I'll link everything like that below. And um, it's an unfair comparison, of course, because this is expensive and it's going through an expensive signal path. Um, but anyway, that's just for reference. Let's switch back now and press on again. So I should explain the concept of the Lark M2. For so long now, lav mics have been either just really visible and quite ugly to look at and, you know, just obvious or They've been, you know, hidden and probably taped to a subject's chest, and that can be kind of fiddly and awkward. Don't get me wrong, those are still really good options. But what Holy Land have done is they've really leaned into the idea of a lav mic being a wearable item that's intentionally visible and, you know, it becomes more like a clothing accessory. I think that's genius. The Lark M2 is wireless, as I mentioned in the intro, but what I didn't mention is that on the spec sheet of this, it has a range of 300 meters, around a thousand feet. And if that's true, that's impressive, but of course I will test this in a bit. Hollyland say that you get 10 hours of battery charge, and if that's the case, that's pretty good. I haven't sat there for 10 hours watching it to run out of battery, but what I have done is since I got this, I've left one of the transmitters out and I haven't charged it at all and it's still seemingly going strong. So that's pretty good. It comes with a slick charging case, which the feel of it reminds me of Apple AirPods. And to this I say bravo to Hollyland and I hope it's something we're gonna see more of for filmmaking peripherals going forward. I know Aperture are doing a lot of this, a lot of uh, charging cases for some of their lights, so it's all good news. The case will get you to fully charge twice in just 1.5 hours, so this really is super handy. Hollyland say that with the battery case, the system gives a total of 40 hours battery life. And hang on a minute, I'm modestly okay at maths, but it doesn't take a genius to see that those figures don't quite add up. 10 hours life from a transmitter, Okay, and then two extra charges, that's 30 hours. And what if I'm using both transmitters and then I'm charging both of them in the case? That's gotta have an impact on the runtime, surely? This doesn't add up. If you know what's happening here, I mean, maybe I've missed something, let me know. The Lark M2 records at 48 kilohertz and 24 bit. So modern, sensible bit depths and sample rates. It also has a signal to noise ratio of 70 dBA. And to give you kind of some context there, you know, the, the higher that number, the better. And I would expect a recording studio microphone to have a kind of a little better signal to noise ratio of around maybe 75 or better dBA. For example, my AKG C414 XLS, which I've got mounted on my Rode arm behind me, has a signal to noise ratio of 88 dBA, which is, I mean, it's an exceptionally clean microphone, but you know, 18 decibels different, 
just saying. It's rated to cope with a sound pressure level of 115 decibels, basically the volume in which you'll start to hear harmonic distortion. Now, more context for you, again, my C414 behind me is rated at 140 SPL, so that's gonna sound much cleaner at higher volumes, whereas this will be more sensitive. Of course, a big part of modern lav systems game is noise cancellation. And this one has a low and then strong mode and it can be switched on and off just actually from the transmitter itself. So that's really cool. But of course, I'll be testing it in a bit. One thing this system doesn't have and I think would have been really quite amazing is internal storage in the receiver. I know what you're thinking. It probably would need to be slightly bigger the receiver itself and the whole system would need to cost slightly more but again not much flash media is small and fairly inexpensive so just imagine the possibilities i just think that was potentially a little bit of a missed opportunity and would have been super cool there are a few bundles available there's one for use with phones there's this one, which I got for use with cameras, obviously, and there's a combo version for basically any situation. Moving on to the build quality side of things, and th there's a fair bit of plastic involved, but it doesn't feel poorly made at all. In, in fact, let me just show you. And here it is. I'm not much of an unboxer on the whole, but you know, let's, let's show you what you get in the box. We've got instructions, warranty card, that kind of thing. And these stickers, these actually go on the mics themselves if you want to wear them. I don't think they're for me personally. We've got the charging case and the transmitters and receivers. We'll leave that for the moment and just see what's underneath. This is a bag full of accessories, cables, and everything that you need. These kind of products often have just so many accessories and bits and nowhere to put them so I, I appreciate having a bag. Ah, Now this is so that you can wear them as you saw earlier in the video. They are magnetic, almost everything here is magnetic and then we have these clips and also these are magnetic. These are super handy as well, they're very small, very compact, they're going to be really discreet to use. And then we've got all sorts of other stuff, we've got little dead cat attachments, more cables, you know what, it's boring, let's skip on. And of course we have the case, which is a charging case, which I love, and we have the transmitters and receiver. I want all of these kind of peripherals to come with charging cases in future because it's so handy. This thing feels really well made, as I mentioned there's a lot of plastic but it was always going to be like that. The mics themselves are incredibly light. In fact, they're actually only nine grams each, which is about as light as I've ever heard of for this kind of lav mic. Overall, I'd say everything here feels good quality, yet supremely lightweight. All the magnets are super strong feeling, and it's just a, a really thoughtful and yet convenient package. Let's move on. Next onto the user experience and user interface side of things. And so far I have had a fantastic experience of using the Luck M2. It's really its strength. You grab the receiver and transmitters out of the case and they quickly switch on and automatically pair. There's no fussing around with pressing pair buttons or holding buttons down to try and get them to connect. It just works and feels really refreshingly easy after using products like the Rode Wireless Go 2. And speaking of buttons, on the receiver, there's a volume control wheel which has three gain settings an on-off button if you need it, and a button that switches between stereo and mono, which is useful if, for example, you're just using one transmitter into your camera. You can switch to mono and use both left and right channels. The transmitters have just one button which switches between low and strong noise cancellation. There's a free Lark Sound app, which, as you can see, gives you largely the same kind of functionality that you get when using the receiver, but you know, it's nice sometimes to have a more visual experience. Plus, you can do things like you can change the uh, noise cancellation mode, which is nice to have. Bear in mind though, your phone and the receiver do need to be connected whilst using it. I did wonder whether using the app, I could monitor the audio using my AirPods, but alas. But you know, if you've been able to get this to work, let me know, uh, I am interested. Anyway, now let me show you how the Lark M2 sounds in a few different situations and versus the Rode Wireless Go 2. And this is what the Lark M2 sounds like. As you can see, I've got it in the style mode. Center of the chest, I've got the noise cancellation uh, on low mode. So what do you think? How does it sound? I'm gonna switch now to the Rode Wireless Go 2. And you know, 
we can see if there are any differences. And then this is what the Rode Wireless 2 sounds like. You are not gonna believe what just happened. I used this system about a month ago for a job. Um, I got back, I charged them, I turned them off, I was sure to, and I put them away. I got them out to use for this test and all of them dead. The transmitters, uh, the receiver, all of them dead, and that's not good. So really, these could do with uh, either a better sort of system, you know, which retains the battery life for longer, or we need, it needs some kind of charging case. So that's a real flaw with the Rode system, and it's something I've noticed before, so really I should have probably just charged them prior to doing this test. But anyway, it's in the same position. You can see how much bulky it is. Does it sound that different? You tell me. And well, yes is the answer. I couldn't believe how good that Lark sounded with just no EQ, no compression, nothing. And a big thing for me is how easy these are to work with in editing. Do they need work to get them sounding their best? How do they react to EQ and compression? So here we go, before and after, without processing, then with. And this is what the Lark M2 sounds like. As you can see, I've got it in the style mode. Center of the chest, I've got the noise cancellation uh, on low mode. So what do you think? How does it sound? And this is what the Lark M2 sounds like. As you can see, I've got it in the style mode. Center of the chest, I've got the noise cancellation uh, on low mode. So what do you think? How does it sound? So as you can see, I've got it attached here. I'm just gonna walk that way uh, back to the camera. So it's not technically line of sight, but we'll see. We'll just see how far we go. And um, I'm gonna walk that way. Just keep talking and fairly sure I've engaged the noise cancellation. Not that you really need it here, but I will do a proper test of that coming up. I'm a little way away. Let's see if you can hear me past this point. Now I could even go around the corner and see if that does anything to interrupt the signal. Here we go. I'm gonna dart this way and see if you can hear me. That's pretty far away. I wouldn't be surprised if this is cut up. I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't hear that, but that's okay. I'm gonna keep walking. I always feel like a crazy man just talking to myself. I should stick AirPods in and pretend I'm on the phone, shouldn't I? Editor Harv here, and I just wanted to download my thoughts on what we just saw. You could hear me walking along because I had it attached to my coat, and looking at my audio, it actually only cut out one time, and that's when I went behind meters of thick stone walls, so I think that's incredibly impressive. I didn't measure the distance, I honestly can't see myself needing to film from further away than this, so it's a tick from me. So I'm in a really busy cafe, and I've got the noise cancellation off. You can probably hear tons of noise. I'm just gonna switch it on. Really simple test. You can see it's gone green. That should be on and it should be sound better. Uh, what do you think? I wanted to run just one more test. So far I've just been running the audio straight into my camera onto the file, but does it sound better at all if I run it onto something like my Tascam Porter Capture X8? handheld recorder, which is an excellent product. You should check out my review. And then I wanna see if I can get it going through my Heritage Audio Brit Strip, which is kind of a, a cache note object channel strip. So it's an, a really good uh, preamp um, EQ compression. And then I'll have it going through my SSL 12. I've reviewed all of these products. You should look at the reviews, uh, I recommend them. So this is what it sounds like through the camera. Let's switch to the Tascam. And this is what it sounds like going through my Tascam Porter Capture X8. I've had to turn the gain up on the receiver and quite high on the Tascam unit itself. So um, I don't know what it's gonna sound like, but in theory, it should be better because all the components are, you know, better for audio than a camera is on the whole. So yeah, let's switch again. And there we go, this is crazy. I mean, you probably wouldn't do this in real life. I've got this going into the DI of my Heritage Audio Brit Strip, which, you know, I've, I've cranked the preamp a little bit, so you might get some, some harmonic distortion. 
you you know you're going to get some of the EQ section going. I've got some top and bottom boosted, so it might sound a little fatter and a little more crisp. And then I've got it running through the amazing diode bridge compressor you get in the Brit Strip. This is just a crazy signal path, but yeah, I don't know. Does it sound good? You tell me. Moving on now to value for money and alternatives. And to get some context and assess the value, we need to start looking at the most obvious competitors. Firstly, we have the DJI Mic 2. DJI, of course, are a highly respected company. The specs seem similar, albeit not quite as good on paper. In real world test, well, you know, who knows? But the price for the two transmitter, one receiver bundle is quite a bit more than the price of the Lark M2. Then we have the Rode Wireless Series. I own the original and now the Wireless Go 2. You heard it, so you can decide how they compare. Personally, I'd say they're a little overrated. The transmitters are relatively heavy and I've never been totally happy with the sound, but people buy them because it's Rode, yawn. I've said it before, I know they're the biggest name in on-camera audio, but in the recording studio world, Rode are not particularly highly regarded. These are also priced far higher than the Lark M2. You might argue that the Wireless Pro is a better comparison as it comes with a charging case and some other cool features, but I don't think that's particularly fair seeing as it costs around 150% more than the Lark M2. Next to the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So starting with the pros, and I love the concept of these. The idea of leaning into them being a wearable item that actually kind of looks okay and not obviously a lav system, I just think it's genius. This system is so lightweight. I mean, nine grams per transmitter, that's unbelievable. This is such a convenient package. Everything is just really thoughtful. Honestly, apart from a little bit of internal storage, I'm not sure how I could improve the convenience factor. The sound quality was impressive. Far more finished sounding than any wireless lav system that I've ever used. The battery life has been incredible. I've still not charged it since it arrived. I'm just gonna see how long it lasts. This costs less than the competition and works brilliantly, so I'd say this qualifies as being exceptional value. And then the cons, and this was kind of difficult. I would have loved to see an internal storage. It's not really a con, just more of a wish. And again, not really a con, but I question the style side of things, particularly the stickers that come with it. I think they're, they're, they're not for me, shall we say that? Finally, it's in my opinion, and how has it taken this long for a lav manufacturer to think differently like this? You know, to, to think of um, lav systems as more something that, you know, that look okay as a wearable item, almost as a fashion item, dare I say it? But, you know, I think Hollyland have been really kind of smart. It's really forward thinking and using these, I've just been so, almost kind of blown away. So impressed. I would say as useful as lav systems are, I don't think the kind of the lav sound is for me. You know, I came from a, an audio background using mics like this condenser mic. And um, I always find that with lav mics, I have to do a fair amount of surgical EQ cuts to kind of to make them sound normal. And I think the reason I feel like this is that, you know, we don't usually hear people's voices by putting our ears next to someone's chest, it's just a little bit unnatural compared to the way that you set up, say, a condenser microphone. However, the Lark M2 is different, I feel. It's probably the best sounding lav system that I've used, and I certainly think it's the most convenient, and I think you get tons for your money. It's amazing value. Honestly, I know I'm giving, I'm giving this away, but I think I'm, I think I'm gonna have to sell my my Rode Wireless Go 2 and buy another version of this for my use because I don't think I can go back, honestly. So anyway, that's my review. It's really good. It's worth every penny. It's smart as hell. And this was an interesting review because I I like to be critical. I like if, you know, if I'm gonna recommend something, I like to find all the flaws and tell you about them before, you know, if you were gonna go and buy something. Uh, so yeah, and I couldn't find many. So anyway, I hope you found this interesting and helpful. I want to hear from you. What did I miss? Did 
did you agree? Definitely let me know, pop you know comments down below and I'll, I'll be down there as much as I can be. I've now made hundreds of videos about video and audio of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. <laughs>